The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in the podcast belong solely to the hosts and not the hosts' past, present, or future employers. Hello, everybody. This is Brian and Mr. Betcher for Breaking Down Security. Hello. Yeah, so um, it's... uh, it's it's uh, been an interesting week. So, uh, uh, Mr. Betcher, are you uh, getting any of the snow that apparently everybody's getting on this, the 31st of January when we're recording this? No, of course not. I'm down down south, so uh, we yeah. rarely get snow, although we did get some this year. <sighs> yeah, it must, must be nice to not have to deal with snow. Uh, I keep telling myself I only have two more years and then I'll be back in sunny San Diego. So I have um, never so- shoveled snow. So, oh, you're a go. lucky man. You're. I, I lived in Missouri for the first 18 years of my life. I st- shoveled enough snow. Let me just just say, <laughs> yeah, um, kind of sucked. Um, but uh, yeah. So if you're not hearing Miss Berlin's voice, uh, she is. Uh, of course, we're j- recording this on the 31st of January. There's a huge nor'easter uh, winter storm for for those of you not in the United States, uh, heading through the the Northeast and the Great Lakes region, and it's pretty much socking everyone in winter storm warnings and what have you. So. Uh, Miss Berlin texted us, said she's got a sick kid and she's got bad road conditions and she needs to go out and get cold medication. So I was like, don't worry about it. Family comes first, as, as we always say here. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take up the, the, the slack and, and make sure that we, we get out some good product here. So, um, all right. What's that? We hope. We Let's hope. Give, yeah. Give it a yeah. good try. It's a hurt. It's a Sisyphusian task, if you will. Um, but uh, so, all right. So, a little background for this uh, for this discussion. We have an interview this uh, this week with uh, Ronnie Watson, and uh, I saw a post from the SECon two hundred two on Twitter. They're at SECon two hundred two, and they said, uh, th- you know, this was an Elastic Search or Elastic Stack security professional uh speaker and 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 the handle ronnie's handle is secops geek and uh, we wanted to talk about sim dashboards and network monitoring and logging and such and i was like we haven't done one of those in a really long time and i thought well let's get ronnie on to talk about that because he's he's far more knowledgeable about it than i am so uh welcome ronnie to the show thank you so much appreciate you for having me i'm glad to be here Cool. Yeah. Uh, seriously, you're far more knowledgeable about this than I am. I'm just a filthy project uh, project manager at this point in my career. Still so uh, I I just manage the talent, if if you will. So uh, at my work. So um, first, let's uh, let's let's hear about your uh, your origin story, how you got to to where you're at today, and uh, you know uh, what what uh, you know what what fires your uh, your imaginations and 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 ideas about uh, security. All right. To believe it or not, a hundred dollars got me to where I am today. And the background because of that is back in 2012, I had a computer and I was always bricking it, crashing it. Didn't Mm -hmm. learn how to install the operating system. So I took it to the local shop. They charged me $50. I paid the $50 and I was a spark like, how did you fix it? Because I know you can do that, install the system over again. And so I paid $50 and he fixed it. Then I went back home, tried to replicate it, break it again. Oh. So I took it back, spent $50 more again. And this time around, I said, hey, what did you get to install the drivers? Oh, picking your brain now. So he said, yeah, I installed these drivers. Like, can you put them on my desktop? Okay. He put them on my desktop and Long story short, I didn't never have to pay for nobody to fix my computer ever again. And that pushed me down the whole IT line with just troubleshooting, help desk, and the portion that sparked me for security is when my profile got hacked. And I wanted to be the person that wanted to defend people or kind of teach them or educate them how to secure their profiles because I was a victim. So I know how it feels to be on that receiving side with somebody that compromises your account and it was with my Twitter account a long time ago. Very nice. Okay. Um, so maybe you could tell us a little bit about some of the training that you gave uh, at, at, 
in Elasticsearch. I know that we've we in the past few you know weeks about uh, the issues with Elasticsearch. Uh, um, what what made you want to to give this training? Was uh, are you using this uh, it in your organization or or what? Yes, we are using Elasticsearch in our organization, and it's part of another system called Security Onion, which Elasticsearch, a Security mm -hmm. Onion, and Logrhythm, and also um, uh, Waza, which Waza uses OpenStack, but they're all based on uh, the Elks, their Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. So they're pretty much based on the same mm -hmm. thing. And I was looking for an alternative to using some type of SIM technology because Security Onion was not working out with my demo lab. But when you got 120 some gigs worth of RAM on a beefy server at work, how can you pass that up? You know, so deploying that work right. works smoothly. Yep. And I want to go back and build the SIM portion for the Elastic Search and everything instead of the security onion and build that and kind of get the monitoring some of my servers and my VMware clusters to kind of get packet B information for a geographical location. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it's, that sounds like a huge undertaking. I mean, this is not something that people enter into lightly. I'm just going to set up a SIM. I'm going to do all this. Um, what What were some of the things that you were hoping to gain uh, from this that you didn't have when you started using uh, the 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 Elk Stack and and uh, Waza and and all those other technologies you had implemented? Basically, visibility. You know, I want to be able to know what type of connections are traversing from my core devices whether it's servers or if it's syslog type of data that's ingested into my network, I want to be able to monitor every aspect because if you're a network administrator, your job is to monitor the network, make sure it's healthy. But now this is a day and age where security is top priority. So you got to make sure that your network is secure. And by deploying this type of SIM technology, is giving me a more in-depth look on my network. So I'm seeing more things that I wouldn't have seen where I'm seeing peer-to-peer -peer traffic traverse my network. I'm thinking it's BitTorrent, but actually it's Windows um, delivery optimization turning for peer-to-peer -peer updates. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like that, yep. you never know. But since I'm using that technology, it's gaining more visibility into my network. So. You know, it's, it's something where you just got to actually know what's going on. More what the packets are doing on your network, you know, as it was. Right. Sure. Um, yeah. We see that quite often where um, an individual, either a network administrator or a security engineer, will take the time and effort to get to know his network inside and out. And, and he or she then becomes very familiar with the day-to-day -day that goes on, and then they're more apt to notice any change that happens, right? And that's when right. the, 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 the ears start going out and the eyes start popping, and you're like, okay, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. And that's where you find these things that you never would have found. Nobody would have ever seen them until mm -hmm. it's too late. True. That is so, so true. I mean, you would never know it because – that kind of prepped me to know that when I'm pushing out updates, I know what my bandwidth and my network can handle. And I know what times I can push it out. Because if I push it out at a Monday in the heat of the day, my call centers go down, they're using VoIP. So I know what my network is capable of. I know what it can handle. I know how much I can throw at it before people start complaining. So, you know, you are absolutely right. If you're a network person or he or she, it's tasked with their job. They must know that network. Right. Um, so uh, w was there was there any, you know, did management want this? I mean, was this something that they wanted or was this a, a part of an overall goal to, uh, you know, to, to, to get your, your more visibility into your network? I mean, a lot of people, you know, undertake these kinds of things to get more um, visibility into the networks after compliance or an audit check, or, you know, oh, we're going to need to, to be able to prove that we're, you know, collecting logs and that we're viewing those. Um, was there any, was there any, you know, um, specific reason why this was being uh, implemented? And, and if it's something you 
you can't talk about because it's company related or like, you know, we suffered a breach or something is feel free to, to, you know, take the fifth on that one. No, nah, it wasn't because of a breach or anything. It's just the IT director. He was going through like HIPAA compliance stuff because we are healthcare. So we do govern on the HIPAA compliance and I've gone through and reviewed certain type of audits and stuff like that. Just reviewing our network. And he mentioned that look into a SIM technology. And I looked into SolarWim, right. they had a security event manager, but it gave you Windows event logs. You know, it gave you those type of logs, but it didn't give you no specific where it was packet information logs, like data traversing over your network. It's just Windows based. So if it was a failure of authentication, you would know. But if it was like right. a packet right. going across your network to a certain destination with an IP, and you can break down that packet and you can analyze the data that is decoded that didn't give you that. So that's what um, led me to just go and look for some type of solution. He gave me the blessing on it. I researched it, looked for something, set up my switches to port mirror, put that um, tap on my network, turned on the security onion, which is basically a um, elastic stack ingested my um, logs into it and I started going through PCAP logs and now for to get to the portion of doing the uh, uh, the Elxium because it has an EDR um, portion in it as well so if it's certain type of malware or type of EXC files that's executed it can give you an ILC point of view of when it was initialized I was compromised through a whole like Sorry about tech kill chain. Like, what was the processes that it took? And that's what I'm trying to learn right now with this new software. And it's a challenge, you know, trying to set it up and not having the professional help. But since it's free and open source, you get all the beauties of trying to learn it. But the downside is you don't get no professional help. Now that you pay for it. But Plus, you look like an IT piece. god. Be- you look like an IT guy because you didn't pick solar winds. So there you go. You know, you're like, yeah, well, not necessarily. I got hit by that bullet, but we we on the updated version, to be honest. Oh, we was good. hit by it, but Woo. we didn't get compromised because we the the people that was our account rep said the version you have is all right. So we didn't okay. have to upgrade, but yeah. <laughs> did you catch those attempts though? Mm-hmm. Did you catch the attempts at compromise? No, uh, because the version that we have, we wasn't impacted by it. And since I already had that software installed, I was just going through so much, like hundreds and thousands of data connections. And, you know, it probably was something there, but I thought I was being compromised, but it wasn't because they let us know that the version we have, we're all right. We don't have the upgrade. We're good. We're not compromised in anything. But if we did have that version, I'd be a lot more worried. I'd be digging through my event logs like crazy because I'm trying to monitor this, you know, like what is going on? I seen with the um the cert they put out their advisory that anybody that's doing DOD compliance, they need to upgrade, you know what I'm saying? Or get that offline. So I was hoping that we wasn't affected by it, and I was going through checking, and the account representative told us, like, look, your version is fine. If you're not impacted, I was like, thank you. <laughs> now, nice. uh, Security nice. Onion comes with rapid response. Did you get into that yet? Not yet. Most of the stuff I got into was just, like, the ID, uh, S alerts and um, yep. triaging through its alerts and this module functions, whether it's, peer-to-peer traffic or if it's external group policy updates, which our whole company is on one land. So I'm governing like 10, 11 sites and I control all of their network through SD-WAN. So we have group policies updating all the time over, you know, VPN. So I get alerts from that all the time, but that's nothing to be concerned because I know those IP addresses. But yeah, we, we get those type of alerts and I'm trying to filter through what is what. And it can get overwhelming when you just got a lot of logs and a lot of alerts just coming through. I'm trying to roll through. Right. So, so Ronnie, uh, 
you had mentioned that you're collecting logs from EDR from your network devices. You've got full, you know, full PCAP, you know, capture sounds like uh, you're doing. Um, what, how, how do you, how do you filter out that noise? How do you, how do you keep it so that, um, uh, you know, you're only getting what you need, you know, in this case, how would you have known in this case, you, you said solar winds didn't affect you, but how would you have known that if you had, you know, gobs and gobs of stuff? I mean, there must be, uh, you know, folks out there that look, you know, have a SIM every day and they're like, oh, I'm, I just don't even bother looking at it anymore because it's a lost cause. What do you do in, in your case to try to uh, make sense of the logs from, you know, oh yeah, you know, and, and making correlations between the EDR and the server logs and, you know, your, your IDS stuff on the network. How do you, how do you, you know, create a, a timeline or a, a picture of what's really going on in your environment? Oh, well, they got filters that are part of it, and you can filter based on certain strings. So if I'm looking for a particular string that was in a PCAP file or in um, Elasticsearch, they got discovery. It's just like if you see anything like Splunk, how they have their little window pane and you're just scrolling through logs, it's basically the same type of view in discovery, and you can basically filter through timestamps through IP addresses, host names, or if you got a specific string you want to filter for, you can filter for that string and then you can create different type of graphs around that string and filter out that type of information. And in that case, if it's something dealing with my server and I don't know what that IP address is, I'm going to type in that IP address, try to filter for it. And once I get my results, then I will dig down through those PCAP files to see what type of information that's interesting, whether it's something I need to be concerned about or with somebody reaching out to our Cisco umbrella because I see that IP address in there. Or if I see them going to a certain domain name, is that supposed to be blocked on the network? Is they supposed to be going to Facebook or are they supposed to be going to company websites? You know, stuff like that. But it do have filters where you can separate that amounts of data just to what you're looking for. And that's where the most of the um, part of the potential is. You got timestamps and filters and host names, DNS names, IP address, just anything you could think of, just to separate <laughs> all that mass of data. Okay, very cool. So you could you could actually take a packet and from the time it hits your external firewall to the time it hits a workstation, you can actually follow that all the way through the network in, in almost like a timeline fashion and go, okay, yes, it was it was seen by the firewall here and it was passed to this switch and it was passed to this workstation and the EDR looked at it and said it was okay. And, you know, it, it was a website and it went here and this is this is the DNS. You can, you can actually t timeline that entire packet. You can timeline it from the time that it started by looking at the um, time it come in because when it comes through your network, it's going to have stages where it communicates with different devices. So it's going to communicate with your firewall. It's going to go through your DNS servers. And if it's Kerberos or any, any type of authentication via your server, it's going to show you that IP address and potentially if there's any host names, you will see that host name show up in that timeline as well. And you can kind of filter in a little bit more. And especially with the EDR portion of Elastic, I haven't delved into that at all that much, but I have noticed that I had a service running on my system and it popped up and flagged the application I was downloading and installing. So that could be like the initial ILC if it was something bad, it will show up in that timeline where you can drill down on that packet inside Elastic Sim and give you a visual timeline, like to say, for instance, um, let's see, Patrick's Lab, where they got something like that, or CrowdStrike, or um, 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 Logarithm, or something like that. They got those timelines that show you exactly from start to finish. And that's one of the things where Elastic Stack. They have that EDR that does the same portion. It gives you that timeline. So if it was if something bad that the EDR did pick up, it can show you the initial compromise to the point of directory what commands it used, all the way to the point what was potentially ex I mean exported, which I haven't delved in too much, but I've seen pictures and graphs of it. And mm -hmm. that's really, really the heart of it, really cool of the um CM portion. And what can really help is if, if it flags uh, like an executable coming through, 
-hmm. and you don't know if it's good or bad, but it kind of says, hey, there's a warning here. You can actually download that sucker yourself. You can replay that mm -hmm. and then upload it to Virus Total or what have you just to see if it's something you need to uh, look at. That is correct. And they do have some type of rules in the EDR portion that you can create policy rules for Amazon Web Services, for different type of software. And when you enable those base default rules, it's going to fire off and trigger on anything that it seen, whether it's Kubernetes, Elastic Cloud, Amazon um, Services, Azure, or Docker containers. They have a bunch of default policies that's in there that you can go through and enable if this corresponds to your environment. So if I got a lot of Windows stuff where I got a lot of service going on, you can enable those services specific just for Windows and filter out everything else so that you're tuning it to what you needed to ingest and display on the screen versus just having a bunch of rules put up there. Like, you know, you don't need Azure rules if you're not running Azure, you know, stuff like that. But now, Ronnie, you when you use. first set this up, it had to be overwhelming at first. Right? Oh, yes. I mean, very, very you don't know awesome. what you're doing. You got all this stuff here. You got that information. Yeah, you may know your network, but wow, you didn't know it like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. How did you overcome that that uh, sense of, man, this is, this, this is too much data. This is too much for me. How do I learn all this stuff? Man, to be honest, I never did get over it because I'm still trying to deal with it and still trying to learn it, you know. It's, it's just a responsibility I have to accept because if I want to be in security, this is going to be part of my responsibility. If you're going to want to be in networking, this is this time and age, security is a big part of your network, you know, so you just have to deal with it and try to make do with the best. So, you know, try to overcome it. I try my best to just motivate myself like, this is my focus. This is my job. You know, this is what I want to do. And it keeps me going, you know, because I'm passionate and I'm motivated. But trying to get over it is it's overwhelming. You know, it's very overwhelming. But, you know, you just can't really just get over it and just throw it behind you. It's just steadily going to hit you in the face every day. It's just going to be a challenge, you know. Another day, another challenge I have to get over. And, you know, it's still overwhelming and daunting to this day trying to learn this stuff. I'm still boggled down like, what the heck? I, I'm bashing my head against the wall every day, man. It's it's crazy, but, you know, that's where determination, motivation, and passion come in. You know? Yeah, you don't so, give up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so Ronnie, do you um, do you have any specific uh, rule sets that you use for detections, or um, do you, do you incorporate any threat intelligence feeds or anything into your to your logging? To um, I, I know we we talked about using Virus Total to look at uh, malicious binaries, so you probably get some hashes in that respect. Uh, is there any other ways? Is there like IP reputation, you know, plugins or anything you use that uh, you know fl can Whoa. help you flag for bad stuff? The Elastic Sim do have virus total plugins, and I think they do have who is plugins. And okay. in the security portion, you can have those plugins, but I guess they're going to be like through APIs that you have to plug into it. But brief, mm -hmm. just going over the whole system, yeah, I did see where it did have plugins for who is and virus total. And you can't add more plugins based on the services that is available. But those were some of the ones that I did off the bat i just did not set those up because i didn't have um virus total and i was just getting this thing installed off the ground and most of the stuff was going through with my lab environment so i'm just still testing it before i really want to fully deploy it at work which i do have a testing environment at work then i'm just going back and forth from home incorporating that into my testing and whatever changes i make i gotta make sure i incorporate it for my environment as well. So I'm still in that testing phase, but yeah, they do have plugins for it. I just don't know the hard and the stand of the plugins, but I did see virus total and I believe it's who is. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I, I like, 
like I said, before we started recording, I don't, I don't uh, use these tools. I've never been involved in, in severe network monitoring, except back in the day when I was in, in the Navy. So this is going on about 20 years. So the, the tooling and, and, and everything has changed quite a bit. There was no virus total back then. There was no looking up hashes online uh, for that. So um, you, you'd mentioned alerts earlier, uh, obviously having a busy network like you do with a lot of uh, hosts and a lot of logs coming in. Uh, you get a lot of alerts, probably quite a few false positives. Uh, what was that like for you when you were first starting it? And, and what were some of the ways that you figured out uh, how to, to manage that? Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of socks and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Petcher and I have worked at a place where it was like, oh yeah, you see those 10 red things? Don't worry about those. They're fine. Those, those 10 thing, red things are fine. Um, but uh, how, did, how did you deal with the, those alerts uh, and, uh, and, and, and what happened when they first started showing up? Did anybody else see them and go, oh my God, what's going on? Or uh, were you, you know, completely left your own devices on this? Well, at this moment, uh, I'm the original or the only person that is left because the IT director was let go and the co-worker, she moved on to other better, better, better things. So it's just me and the new IT director. But the previous one that I set it up under, he was uh, giving me the okay because he wanted to look for a sim. And yes, I do see all type of alerts that flag through. Sometimes I may think it's a uh, potential Trojan until I look at it, discover the PCAP, and determine whether or not was it a false positive and go through that just like I did with like the BitTorrent traffic, which with just Windows delivery optimization, just downloading updates and passing them across my um, network into you know peer-to-peer -peer traffic. So yeah, you will see a lot of alerts coming through and based on those alerts, you can't clear them out. And especially that's just according to uh, Security Onion, but in the, um, the Elastic Stack, you can um, have alerts set up and they can be um, popping up on your dashboard in the network thing, and you just can go through and look at those alerts as they pop up on that screen. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to get set up with that portion for the Elastic Stack itself. But going to like Security Onion, which is built on Elastic Stack and Kibana, stuff like that, it's the same platform. They just had their all specific IDS rule with Zeek and Suricata. And so you'll see all of those type of events. But um, the Elastic Stack, you can put Terracotta logs and I think Zeke, and you would get those same type of logs as well in a, um, Elastic Sim. And you can go through and just filter out what is what and just move on from there from like a triage statement, triage point of reference, whether you want to see if it's an incident or issue. And if it's just a issue, you can just go ahead, document it, and go on by your business. Whether it's an incident, you go through the triage phase, see who was affected, and try to triangulate what's really going on. But uh, it's uh, okay. both of the platforms are still built on that platform for Elastic Stack. Different, but similar, very similar. Right, right. Um, wh which one do you find it harder to collect logs from? Linux, uh, Windows, Mac? I mean, what what is what is the most difficult to 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 look through or to collect, uh, and maybe even to parse? Oh, uh, since Elasticsearch um, and Logstat, Elasticsearch is going to take your raw logs and convert them to JSON, so it's going to make it okay. more readable okay. and more faster to view those logs in a JSON format. So um, anything that you can throw at it, it can handle and it can ingest those logs and convert it to that, which, you know, I was kind of shocked to like, wow, how is it reading these logs? You know, you get it from a syslog and, you know, depending on the type, you know, it's a JSON or any other format. But yeah, I didn't know that about Elasticsearch, but yeah, Elasticsearch will take any type of log you throw at it, whether it's SQL logs, Apache logs, a web server logs, um, Azure or Kubernetes, all those logs that we can take in once you set up the configurations for it, it's going to parse those out to um, JSON, which is going to make it more faster in searching and make it more um, indexable. So you can go through and look at a JSON file and look at everything, how they format it to the custom view for easier readability. So, it, nice. you know, you can nice. look at it. But, yeah, it do handle logs really good with that. 
by the parson. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we, we talk a lot about the, the windows of NIDs. Um, you know, Mr. Betcher, of course, has his, uh, has his log MD that we'll, we'll talk about a little later, but, um, it's, it's, it's good enough. I mean, it, it, it's difficult enough just to collect the logs into one place and get them correlated. And, um, how did you handle pushing log changes out to your, to your various computers or various systems? I mean, uh, as we've, as we've heard and, and talked about with Mr. Betcher and Ms. Berlin, Logging on Windows, the logging on um, Linux, uh, you know, sometimes you have to install things like Audit D for Linux uh, if it's not already on the system uh, or, or, you know, have some kind of uh, different logging uh, parameters. The configurations kind of suck. So how did you, how did you, you know, push out changes that would make your logs more meaningful at scale? Uh, with that platform, it has when Logbeat is a, uh, which they do have, because Elasticsearch is built on Beats modules, Logstash, Elasticsearch, and Kibana, and the Beat modules will give you all of your data, your metrics, your packet information, your events. So with WinLogBeat, you will just configure and deploy to your service, run it as a service, and all of those logs that come in, whether it was a failed authentication, whether it was um, a service that was running, or was it a privilege escalation, whether somebody use an uh, admin user or something like that, all those logs will be taken back to the Elastic Stack and you can view them in the Kibana Discovery View and look at it when you filter for that specific packet beat, which will be win log. And when you filter mm -hmm. for win log, any of the systems that you got that module installed, you will, it will parse all of those logs and it will show you everything in that dashboard and you can filter out timestamps, filter out IP addresses like I mentioned earlier, and it would just put all of your window system just in one view, in one packet, and you can filter it out through everything, and kind of helps you focus on what's going on with your Windows environment. Okay. Especially with two criticals like servers and stuff like that, but they're making a lot of changes to it, and they're moving over to Fleet, which is in beta, which they call it one um, something one to rule them all. Instead of installing multiple modules, you install a, a module called Fleet, and it's supposed to give you the same metrics, event logs, packet information, all that stuff inside that one module. But just for Windows, if you answer the question, that would be one. I mean, Windows Log be I will deploy that system and pull all those events. Okay. Do you do any metrics? No, to be honest, I don't, but I have played around with metrics on uh, Elasticsearch, and um, they do have like a metric beat, and it just gives you all type of metrics you can get on that system. I can't even remember half of the stuff that they put on there because they have machine learning and other type of metrics and stuff that I couldn't even understand. I'm like, whoa, I'm, my mind is just blown. Like, wow. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> All right, it has so, machine so, learning. I'll have to look into that. That was our show for this week. You can find show notes for this and all of our shows at www.breakingsecurity.com. You can also find an RSS link uh, on the site to add to your favorite podcatcher. You can find all of us on Twitter. Miss Berlin can be found at InfoSister, I N F O S Y S T I R. Mr. Betcher can be found at Betcher Pwned, B O E T T C H E R P W N E D. And you can follow me on Twitter at Brian Brake, B R Y A N B R A K E. We have a Slack. Come join us on our Slack. A lot of great things going on there, a lot of channels of various InfoSec related subjects. You can get an invite on Twitter by emailing our official Twitter uh, handle for the show at BreakSec, B R A K E S E C, or you can email us at bds.podcast at gmail.com. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for their monetary assistance by offsetting costs involved in putting out a weekly show. Zoom fees, Libsyn hosting, domain purchase, uh, renewal, uh, equipment upgrades, equipment, uh, time and effort building the community we have. Uh, we appreciate all of your help and support. 
If you'd like a t-shirt, stickers, coffee mug, or just to show your support for the show, you can check out our TeePub site, www.tpublic.com forward slash user forward slash BDS podcast. We thrive on your feedback. Uh, a quick five-star comment on iTunes or Google Play Store or your favorite streaming service, Spotify, Pandora, what have you, uh, go a long way to uh, gaining us additional visibility. It takes no time at all, and we, we appreciate uh, your help in spreading the word. That was it for Breaking Down Security this week. Be safe, be well, be kind to one another, take care of yourself because you're the only you you have, and we'll talk to you again soon.